Now that we know something about electron configurations and the more complicated quantum theory model of the atom, we will often, as chemists, use a simpler model that's kind of based on it. We call that the shell model or the planetary model. So this is going to look a lot like Bohr's model for the hydrogen atom. And what we're going to use is we're going to draw little rings. We're going to use like planetary orbits for um, each shell. So let's do an example of a planetary model picture for the hydrogen atom. So the hydrogen atom has a nuclear charge of plus one, so I've drawn that here in the middle. And then I draw my first shell. So this is the n equal one shell. And then remember that the electron configuration for hydrogen is 1s1. So I need to put one electron in that shell, and so we're going to make the electron red. So there's the electron in that 1s shell. So if we were drawing the uh, picture for helium, helium has the electron configuration 1s2. So what's different about it is it has two protons in the nucleus, so plus two charge. We draw the same ring, and now we're going to put two electrons in that ring. So one, two. So let's pick another atom from the uh, periodic table. So let's do um, carbon. So carbon's a pretty important atom. So carbon has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So we've already learned about that. So rather than drawing this full picture out, we're going to draw a more simplified picture. So carbon, we figure out its atomic number. Carbon's atomic number is six, so it has six protons in the nucleus, right? And so I'm going to draw my first shell, the n equal one shell, and then I'm going to draw my n equal two shell. So this whole orbit represents both the 2s and the 2p orbitals. And we know it doesn't look like this, but we're just going to say we're going to plug all of those electrons into the same shell model, the same orbit. So if I'm putting electrons in there as little dots, we've got two electrons in the n equal one shell. And then in the n equal two shell, we've got four electrons. One, two, three, four. And I'm just going to kind of separate them from each other because electrons might repel each other. So I'm going to try to move them apart from each other. But again, this is just a picture that we're drawing to represent what's going on. We'll do one more just for good measure. So let's go ahead and do uh, neon. So neon's configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. And so I need to figure out what the nuclear charge is for neon. So nuclear, I looked that up on my periodic table. Um, that's atomic number 10, so plus 10 charge in the nucleus. There this is the nucleus. Here's my first orbit, my first shell, n equal 1. Here's my second shell, n equal 2. And if you were further down on the periodic table, you might have to draw a third orbit or a fourth orbit as you keep going down the rows. So now we need to put our electrons in. So we've got uh, two electrons in the first orbit right here, the first shell, the n equal 1 shell. Then we've got a total of six plus two or eight electrons in our outer shell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so this little picture captures some of the features of our more fancy quantum mechanical model by at least telling us how many electrons are going to be in each shell. So we can figure that out by looking at the highest quantum number. So if we were to look at something uh, more complicated, like our uh, last example of mercury. So mercury has the uh, same electron configuration as um, xenon, sorry, Xc. And then we discovered that the electron configuration for mercury was 6s2. Oops, that's supposed to be an s. 6s2, um, 4f14. 3d, 10. So if I were drawing a shell model picture, I would have to represent all of these different orbitals. But if we just wanted to figure out what is the outer orbital, so um, here we've got the nuclear charge of mercury. So mercury has an atomic number of 80, right? So it's got a total of 80 electrons. So its nuclear charge is a plus 80. So there'd be lots of dots in here. And then I'm going to have lots of shells that I'm not going to draw in here. But here's the outermost shell in mercury, the n equals 6 shell. And how many electrons does it have? It has two. One, two. Because this is my outermost shell, highest shell number. So in the 6, n equals 6 shell, we have just these two electrons. 
And so if I were really careful, I'd draw in all those inner rings too. But the outer ring, it turns out, is often what is most important in chemistry. So I think I need to scroll down a little bit so you can see what I drew there. Let me do that. Yep, so there's my n equals 6 orbit with the two electrons. And the outer orbit is the one that we care about most often in chemistry.